Hello, my name is Barry Carter. This presentation is called Ormus, What Is It? The Matrix of Consciousness. In this presentation, I'm going to try to provide some evidence that Ormus, the substances we call Ormus, are in fact the connector between spirit and matter. Now, what would be the most wonderful and amazing discovery, scientific discovery, that you can imagine? Have you ever heard of some ancient phenomena or ability that might benefit us today? If so, how might such a discovery change our lives and change the world around us? Give these things some thought as we continue with this presentation. Okay, suppose the ancients knew something very basic about our world that we don't know. What if the mystical materials spoken of in many of the world's ancient cultures were actual physical substances that one could obtain and work with? We always hear about these ancient substances like the ancient Egyptians had their mufkat, is what, they, what Lawrence Gardner calls it, which is a white bread which is offered as gold to the gods. The ancient Israelites had their showbread and their manna, which was kept in the Ark of the Covenant. Other religions, they have prana and chi, and in, in the Huna religion, there's also a manna. All of these different substances, they speak of them as actual physical substances, but they have mystical properties. In his book, The Alchemy Key, Stuart Nettleton wrote, Jewish Midrashim commentaries describe how the Ark of the Covenant levitated and carried along some of the people who were supposed to be carrying it. So here's this device which has the pot of manna in it, and it levitates. The ancient Egyptians had the sacrament of the bread and the wine, as do Christians. On the right, you can see an offering of white bread and wine to the gods. You notice the two pots of wine in the person's hands to the, to the right, and the conical loaf on the left. That conical loaf is the mufkat, also known as the showbread. Moses took the golden calf, which the Israelites made for worship, and burned it in the fire, and ground it to a powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it, presumably in order to improve their spiritual connection. So how do you burn gold? How do you do that? I mean, you heat gold up, it melts, right? You shouldn't be able to burn gold. Well, I've burned gold, actually burned it, and eaten it. In fact, I had some last night. Not what I burned, but some that somebody else burned for, for me. And it's relatively easy to do. You can convert the metal into a white powder and put it in water and eat it. The ancient Chinese alchemist Wei Po Yang wrote of the pill of immortality, which is made of wonton, or return medicine an edible powder from gold. Here's this edible powder from gold. It's mentioned in the, in the Bible. It's also mentioned in, in ancient Chinese texts. After one ingests wonton, the complexion becomes rejuvenated. Hoary hair regains its blackness, and new teeth grow where fallen ones used to be. If an old man, he will once more become a youth. If an old woman, she will regain her maidenhood. Now, that sounds useful. Here's a picture of Wei Po Yang. He's the one on the left. Now, Artefius, another alchemist in the 12th century, claimed in his alchemical treatise titled The Secret Book that he had lived for the space of a thousand years or thereabouts, which has now passed over my head since the time I was born to this day through the alone goodness of God Almighty by the use of this wonderful quintessence. So here's this substance made from gold that allowed Artefius to live a thousand years, allegedly. Fulconelli, a modern French alchemist, or more or less modern, tells us in a book, The Mysteries of the Cathedrals, how the secrets of alchemy were carved and concealed in the architecture of the great cathedrals in Europe. He is believed to have made the Philosopher's Stone helped by his study of these cathedrals. So the Freemasons, built the alchemical symbols into the cathedrals that the, the Roman church built. 
This probably was part of the, the dispute between the Masons and the Catholic Church because they were concealing their knowledge and information in a building that was supposedly uh, under the control of the, the Roman Church. But since they, they knew how to build these buildings and the Church Fathers didn't, they had to, they had to put up with them, I suppose. If there's truth in these ancient stories, then the truth should be open to examination by modern science. We should be seeing some of these phenomena that were, were spoken of here. Some modern scientists have postulated that there is a non-physical template for the physical world, a spirit template, if you will. David Bohm calls this template the implicate order, implicate meaning implicit meaning sort of hidden order. And the explicate order, which is explicit, the world we know, is an image of this implicate order. The physical world is an expression of the non-physical template. Now, I like to use an analogy. This is sort of like a field of information that we can connect to. Sort of like the internet is a, is a an information source that we can connect to over the phone line or, or over the cable. So I call it the internet, this non-physical internet or connecting arena or area where we connect with everything that is. In this model, there would be a connector between the physical world and spirit, so to speak, between what we see what we feel, the world as we know it, and the non-physical. And this connector would have certain properties. One of these properties that it would have would be that it would have non-locality or quantum coherence. Now, non-locality means that it's not local. It's nowhere specific. It's everywhere at once. And being everywhere at once, we're starting to talk about attributes that people have attributed to God. God is omnipresent everywhere at once. And here we're talking about physical substances that have attributes of spirit. And physicists are saying that there are physical substances that have non-local properties. They behave as if they're everywhere at once. You cannot, you can, if, if you put a signal in over here, it instantly responds over there. There's no time lag. It's faster than the speed of light. Some scientists say billions of times faster. Some scientists say instantaneous. It's so much faster that they can't measure how much faster it is. So what is this connector? If the implicate order which I call the Internet, is an instantaneous communication medium and energy source, what would the connector between the physical body and this infinite non-local Internet be? It'd be something like a modem, like, like we use when we, we hook up to the Internet. A modulator, demodulator, something that connects us to this non-physical realm, to this spirit realm. We believe that Ormus is this connector. It's sort of the keystone in the bridge between spirit and matter. It's a connector between, like you have a, an archway, and right in the middle of the arch there's the keystone. That, that's what joins the two halves of the arch. Well, we think that Ormus is that keystone. It's that connector between spirit and matter. Now, remember we heard about how the ancients spoke of such things as being a special form of gold and other precious metal elements. These are the known Ormus elements. Notice that all of the precious metal elements are in here, in, in addition to some that aren't really considered to be precious metal elements. These are almost all or all transition elements, They're right in the center of the periodic chart. Cobalt, nickel, copper, ruthenium, Rhodium, now ruthenium is precious metal, rhodium, palladium, silver, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, and mercury. Now, 